there, and welcome to the Song Ranting Podcast, where I take questions from my mailing list, social media, as well as my private clients and students, and do my best to be of service in the realm of songwriting. So, all things songwriting. This episode is based on the third in a series of five live streams I did on YouTube at the beginning of the year, and they're all based on the top five frustrations that musicians face when writing songs. So, it's a very warts and all type of uh, production here. I'm not really following a script, and uh, it's a little rough around the edges, but I think it'll be helpful for everybody out there. So, in part three of the live stream series, I rant about the subject of originality in music, and I address this specifically by answering the following questions and comments. So, one, person feels like everything has been done before. Maybe you've heard that one before. Uh, Two, what I write sounds like I'm ripping off another band. And then three, how do I find my own sound? So each of these things, you know, they fall under the umbrella of originality, right? But they're very different from each other. So I wanted to address each one individually. And while I'm at it, I wanna give you my multi-step checklist to help you write better songs. So essentially it's just a short PDF of simple steps that will help you get out of your own way and kickstart the creative process. And it basically serves as a companion to everything I'm talking about today. So if you're struggling with writer's block or if you feel like you're always waiting for inspiration to hit, just know that you don't have to. You don't have to wait. You can actually take action and and kickstart the inspiration. It it might seem a little counterintuitive, but trust me, it works. So if you're interested, grab the PDF for free at fastermusiccreation.mykajabi.com slash songranting. And if you're watching on YouTube right now, I'll include the link in the description below. All right, let's get to it. Welcome to day three of this songwriting live stream series where I've just been uh, taking a single topic each day and just breaking it down and just offering my own perspective as a songwriter in an effort to hopefully answer some questions and help people overcome some some challenges that you know are very commonly faced when it comes to dealing with songwriting. So today I am delving into the topic of originality. So specifically, you know, I wanted to pick three questions that I um, received on social media regarding this topic. Uh, one being the, the weirdly popular opinion of everything's been done before, right? Uh, which I do not agree with, but we'll get into that in a second. The other one just being, you know, I write a song and then minutes later I hear that same song or that same progression or same melody on the radio, right? People are so afraid of plagiarizing other other bands and whatnot, and I totally get that because I, I have that same fear as well. So we're gonna get into that. And then finally, just the whole general obstacle of just finding your own sound, right? Which is easier said than done. So before I get into all of that though, you know, I just wanna start by prefacing this by saying that no matter what, it's going to take time. It's going to take time and consistency, like anything else I've been talking about this week. It just takes dedication and constantly working on this craft to be able to not only get better at songs, but to find your own creative voice. So what do I want to say about originality? I mean, I used to obsess about this starting out uh, as a songwriter. You know, I didn't want to sound like anybody else. I still don't. Um, And I didn't want to, you know, be ripping anybody off, obviously. I didn't want to be plagiarizing anything or anything like that. But the first thing I think that's important to accept is that nothing exists in a vacuum. I remember being told that one time and it just immediately made me feel like, oh, that's true. (laughs) Like everything comes from somewhere. The whole... The whole purpose of art, right, is to convey one's experience in, in, in life, whether you're, you know, painting a, a nature scene or you're writing a song about an experience you had, right? Everything comes from somewhere. And I want to talk about some specific, uh, you know, methods of looking at your songwriting that can, el- that can lead to more original ideas. But first, I want to address the whole topic of everything has been done before. First off, no, it hasn't. (laughs) It's just, that's just a myth. It's just not true. And, you know, I found myself thinking this for a little bit too, like, oh, everything's been done before. But then I realized that 
the only reason why I was saying that is because I was in my own little bubble musically. You know, we all have our genres that we prefer and that, that tends to, you know, create this little um, comfort zone where we don't like to venture out of because it's like, oh, you know, I really like metal or I really like hip hop or I really like jazz and, and uh, or I really like pop music or, or whatever it's going to be. And sometimes because that's our, you know, our happy place, <laughs> that's our comfort zone, we don't want to risk venturing out of that for fear of, you know, listening to something that we really don't like. Because for most, if not all of us, music is is a really, really important, precious thing. It, it can be, you know, a celebratory type of thing, or it can be an escape. And it's something that I know I, for one, consider sacred and um, very, I guess, protective of it. Problem with that, though, is that it can limit your ways of thinking if you only listen to one genre right and based on some of the feedback regarding this topic that i've received from some people it seems like they only listen to one type of music so if i was talking to them i guess the first thing i would ask them if they said everything's been done before it would be like really <laughs> like, like really you've you so you're telling me that you have listened to every style of music dating back to the dawn of music up until now. And you feel like, you know, everything's been done, right? All of that clearly has been done. But my point with that is you think everything's been done and yet chances are you probably haven't heard a lot of different styles of music. And that to me can be a very important first step. You know, if you feel like everything's been done before, if you feel like your, your songwriting has gotten stale, super easy thing to do now more than ever is just to go listen to a new band or a new genre of music or something that you wouldn't normally listen to and just uh, i mean it's not even like how it used to be when i was a kid where all you had were cds cassettes you had to buy them with money shocking i know um or you would do the thing where you would get like um you know, blank tapes and then be really opportunistic with like recording your favorite song when it came on the radio. And then you'd have the, the DJ like talking over the first half and super frustrating. And you're just like, ah, no, get out like that. So those were the options that we had in those days. If you're as old as I am, leave a comment in the description and we can, we can cry together. <laughs> but um, my point with all that is that, you know, there is more music than ever out there and there's more ways to access it than ever. So, if you are on, you know, if you prefer your music on Spotify, how many bands can you discover that you've never heard of before on Spotify, right? You go to a place like Bandcamp, same thing, just like so many different types of artists and bands and styles of music on there. It's just overwhelming. And, um, you know, there's stations like Pandora or uh, Sirius XM or YouTube, right? You could literally just punch in best jazz bands of 2022 or 2021 or 2020, whatever it is. And you'll get what people think are the best things. And you can just immediately delve into a new thing. And I realize like all these things are very proactive, conscious decisions to make. And sometimes, you know, we don't think in those terms because music kind of comes to us in a very, I guess, passive way right? You just, you hear about it from a friend or a song comes on the radio or, or you see an opening band at a show and be like, Oh, whoa, I wasn't expecting that. Right. It's the opposite of what I'm talking about, but you'd be surprised at what you can find if you just take one minute <laughs> and just search and, you know, don't be afraid to take a risk and buy some music from somebody that you've never heard of before. You're supporting the artist. And even if you don't like what you're hearing immediately, who knows? Maybe five years down the road, you love it. Maybe you don't get it at first and maybe you're not meant to at this point in life, but maybe you get it later on. It's kind of like books where, you know, you get a book and maybe it doesn't resonate with you at a certain period in your life. And then later on, you've grown as a person and certain concepts make a lot more sense. And they're a lot more relatable to you in that book. You know what I mean? Like, it's like that. And the beautiful thing about that is you only have to pay for it once. And that, and that is with you for your entire life. 
it's a re it's kind of like a renewable resource in in a sense where you can always go back to it and it can always you know give you some kind of feeling if it's something you love obviously it's always something you can go back to and you'll have fond memories of it and whatnot but anyway i digress so that's what i say to start with regarding everything's been done before go listen to some music you don't normally listen to see if there's anything that you can extract from it right like <clears throat> i don't like country music that much that said there's a lot of great um craft in the songwriting right i could pick up some things of, you know, rhyme schemes and lyrical structures and phrasing and not to mention some of the playing that goes on in it. You know, if I can, if I don't like the overall, um, like melodic and harmonic content of the song, uh, my ear will go to, well, God, I wish I could get that kind of production sound on some of my stuff. You know, I love the way that that snare sound, um, sounds <laughs> i love uh you know how everything sounds so big and full and the separation so you know clear and every instrument is heard really well things like that there's always something to take from any kind of genre of music if you change your thinking about that a little bit and who knows you might wind up getting into a completely new style of music so that's step one is just listen to other stuff so number two, you know, the whole concept of I'm afraid of plagiarizing. I'm afraid of ripping off another band. I just wrote something and immediately after I heard the exact same song on the radio. Okay. So first off, this all depends on the genre, right? But I will say right off the bat <clears throat> in this part of the world, I'm in America, as you can tell by my accent. Um, there's only 12 notes, right? And there's only so many ways to rearrange a chord progression. That said, the more that you know about music theory, the more you can understand about things like modulation, uh, pitch axis theory, uh, you know, chord substitutions, just, you know, ways to embellish chords with, with different notes, you know, incorporating nine chords, seven chords, six chords, anything like that. There's so many different ways to dress up, you know, regular sounding progressions that you've heard, you know, time and time again. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with using a pre-existing chord progression if, if you're afraid of doing that. The challenge lies in, okay, so how do I make this sound unique since this progression has been used thousands of times by so many different artists. That's the first step. And by the way, the reason why artists get away with that, the reason why artists get away with, you know, using the exact same chords as anybody else is because the, the top line melody is going to be different, or maybe the rhythm and the feel of the song is going to be different as well. There's plenty of things that you can do to make things sound completely different from a song that you've heard on the radio. If that's not enough, right? Let's say that you wrote a really happy sounding chord progression, right? And all of a sudden you popped on the radio and be like, oh God, that's the Beatles. <laughs> I just stole the Beatles song, right? Let's say you did that. I would go back and just say, okay, what's one element of this song that I can immediately change to, to make it stand out and sound different from this song that I didn't mean to plagiarize, right? Start with the melody. Always start with the melody. If you're stuck with the melody, try to swap out one chord for another. Uh, use some chord substitution. You know, if if the song that you wrote is also in a major key, what would happen if you reimagine that entire song in a minor key, right? It can drastically, drastically change the mood and potentially be really cool. Um, a good example of that is a cover that the band Ghost did of the Beatles, speaking of the Beatles, um, they covered the Beatles song, Here Comes the Sun. Now, if you've heard that song, you know it's very happy sounding, it's very shiny, right? Here Comes the Sun, it's very, you know, non-sad. What's cool about what Ghost did is that they reimagined it in a minor key, which completely changed the mood of things and just made it sound, to me, really, really refreshing. Um, 
just totally unexpected and just like, whoa, that's really cool. That's something to consider as well. If you wrote something that sounds just like something else, change everything about it. <laughs> like if it's a major key, make it a minor key. Maybe, you know, change the rhythm, change the tempo of things. Definitely change the melody if the melody is the same. But don't worry too, too much about, you know, am I going to be ripping off this artist or that? Unless it's like a blatant copy and it sounds just like it. Yeah, obviously, like, change it. But I think there's just like this fear of not having your own musical voice. And depending on where you're at in your in your journey as a songwriter, if you're just starting out, that's totally okay. And this leads into the third thing I wanted to talk about is, you know, finding your own sound. So um, there's an artist that I've been a fan of for a really long time now. I want to say like, man, probably over 10 years at this point. And his name is Matthias Eklund. And he's a Swedish guitar player. He um, He's a solo artist, but he also has a band called Freak Kitchen. So I'm going to talk about Freak Kitchen and over enunciate each time I say it because it's really hard to say. Um, so essentially this band is more or less a commercial rock band, okay? Like it, the the way that they write songs, the way that they structure songs is very much just a straight up um, commercial rock band format. And yet they do not sound completely commercial. They have super catchy tunes and, and they're awesome. But what's even more awesome about this band is that they incorporate all these outside influences in, in a way where you almost don't even notice at first. And if you're a musician, you'll definitely be like, Oh wow, that was so cool. And like, they just kind of like, they have these cool little, um, you know, uh, instrumental freak out departures, or they'll just have really in um, interesting rhythmic structures. They'll incorporate everything from influences of Django Reinhardt, um, Frank Zappa, uh, Bella Bartok, uh, you know, Slayer, Meshuga. Also, you know, um, if memory serves correct, Western Indian classical music. So they incorporate a lot of conical rhythmic structures, um, use a lot of scale reductions, and just things that are completely, you know, outside of what the Western world would think about as far as what you can do with music. India works on a microtonal system, whereas in the West, we have the, the 12-note system. So therein lies so many more opportunities for, for crazy melodies and just weird ways of creating, um, you know, motifs and ways to enhance a song. Uh, you know, I can't even do it justice. Go check out Freak Kitchen. And if you check out Matthias Eklund's solo stuff, it's everything that he puts into free kitchen, but just kind of like let off the leash. It gets crazy and it's awesome. And my point with all of that is when he started out, he wasn't immediately like, oh, this is my sound and I'm completely realized. And this is like, I know exactly how to do this. It took time. It took a process of him writing, playing and, and you know, rinsing and repeating <laughs> and just exploring this over a period of, how long has he been? I want to say over 25 years. I might be wrong on that. 20 years, give or take. Um, point being, it's not going to happen overnight, you know, and that ties directly in to who you are as a person as well. Music, if you're writing authentically, if you're writing from the heart, right, is a snapshot of where you're at in, in a certain period of time, right? So you're going to be different as time goes on, right? We're always growing, we're always moving forward. So your music is going to be a reflection of that. And I think the older that you get, and the more comfortable with yourself that you get, the more comfortable in your own skin that you get, the the more courage you're going to have to speak with your own authentic voice. And in doing that, that's where the originality comes in when you're just speaking with your own voice, because everybody's perspective is unique. That's what's going to make something original. You can take these same 12 notes, but if you put them through your filter authentically without trying to copy anybody, 
uh, it's going to sound different than somebody else, right? So finding your own sound is a lifelong process. And it's not going to be, in my opinion, it's not going to be this, this, you know, thing at the top of the mountain that you finally get to one day and you're like, oh, this was my sound. Once you get there, it's going to continue to evolve. It's going to continue to grow unless you, you know, keep it from doing that. But I would imagine that would get pretty stale and unsatisfying after a while because everything has to, to grow and progress and evolve. So the main thing I would say with that is like, as far as finding your own sound is don't even worry about it. <laughs> don't focus on trying to find your sound. Just keep doing what you're doing. And the more in touch with yourself that you get, the closer you're going to get to that authenticity. So I know I just said before, like, don't copy somebody else, but I'm referring to like down the road. Once you know what you're doing, once you're comfortable as a writer and all that sort of stuff, and you have honed those instincts and you trust them, don't try to blatantly copy somebody else. But starting out, actually, copying somebody else can be a great way of getting going. I mean, going back to the Beatles, for example, they started out as a cover band because they need to learn how to play their instruments. And that's how they learned how to write songs. And that's how they started to like use all these really unorthodox chord progressions. Uh, they just started by copying others. In fact, I think um, my guitar teacher told me way back when there was an interview with Paul McCartney and I'm paraphrasing, but he said something along the lines of, if you want to start writing songs, just copy somebody else's. Like simple as that right? Like take somebody's song structure, steal that, make that your framework, and then just color in between the lines with your own chords, your own melodies, your own lyrics, and all that sort of stuff. I don't know if people are worried about like, you know, plagiarizing song structures, because that you really can't do. Um, in my opinion, I don't think you really can do that. Because a chorus is a chorus, a verse is a verse, bridge is a bridge. And you know, we all use them. So that said, if the structure of the song leads to a song that sounds just like another song with the chords and the melody and everything that's structured with that, then yeah, you have a problem. But just take a song with a specific intro, verse, chorus, uh, second verse, chorus, bridge, outro, right? And just see what you can, you know, sketch inside it just to get started again i know i always say this but getting started is the most important thing just get started and get out of your own way and just allow stuff to happen um just get curious don't have expectations just get curious that's what i have to say with that so like i said nothing exists in a vacuum everything comes from somewhere we all have influences. I still have my influences. I still more or less wear them on my sleeve. You know, the stuff that I write, you know, certainly draws from everything from Slayer to Meshuggah to Faith No More to Gojira to elements of Porcupine Tree and Opeth and Sepultura and, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and, you know, it's up to the audience to decide if it sounds just like those bands or not. You know, once it's out there, it's kind of like my opinion of it doesn't necessarily matter. It's, it's like, what do you guys think? It's everybody. It's all open to interpretation too. So yeah, just to recap, explore outside influences, realize that nothing exists in a vacuum and ultimately realize that this whole process of finding your own sound is a lifelong process it takes time. And the more that you work at this, and especially if you're in a band context, and you, you finding the right people, right, the right chemistry is huge. That's where to go with that. All right, there you have it. So thank you so much for watching or listening if you're on Apple Podcasts. And uh, I hope you got a ton out of this. I know that was a pretty lengthy episode right there. So there's a lot to kind of unpack. So 
if you're looking for something to help you to process all this sort of stuff in a more concise type of way, I would suggest you grab my free checklist at the link in the description below if you're watching on YouTube or in the show notes at Apple Podcasts, or you could just go to fastermusiccreation.mykajabi.com slash songranting. Again, it's going to take everything that I'm talking about in this episode and just condense it down into some very simple and actionable steps. So grab that, play this episode back, and just read along if you want. It'll, it'll help out a lot. So thanks again for watching. And if you want me to talk about something in particular on a future episode, definitely drop me a comment if you're watching on YouTube or just you know find me on social media and shoot me a message to be like, hey, I'm really struggling with this. I would love for you to talk about this, right? So let me know. Thanks again. Stop!